Hey guys, guess what? It's Angel. You're watching my latest video and I would like to take a minute to say hi to my new subscribers. I'm glad you found me um, and welcome to my channel. Um, for anyone who's watching this who has not yet already subscribed, I um, encourage you to do that. Um, click on the subscribe button and next to it there is a little bell. If you click on that bell and click on all, then you will be notified every time I put up a new video. So with that, uh, today I would like to talk to you about the ways that bipolar or a way that bipolar can trick our minds. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? <laughs> um, so currently I am taking Abilify. And uh, Abilify has been really good for me. Um, I took when the, the medication that stabilized me when I um, when I was had my hospital stay was Seroquel, and I was on Seroquel for um, oh my goodness, I was on Seroquel for five years, six years, something like that, and. Um, they took me off of Seroquel because I started having really bad side effects. The main side effect was uh, tremors. And uh, the tremors got to be so bad that they um, sent me in for a MRI to determine if, it would, if the tremors were from the Seroquel or if I was having early onset of Parkinson's. Um, they determined that the tremors were in fact from Seroquel, so they decided to take me off of it. And I was really and truly, I was terrified to go off of Seroquel because it's the one that had stabilized me. It had stopped me from having, um, you know, suicidal ideations and self-harm, um, you know, issues and things like that. Um, and so uh, they took me off of that, put me on Abilify. Now on the Seroquel, I was having really um, long bouts of depression. And to kind of describe that to you, what that looked like was um, going to bed at like two or three in the morning um, and sometimes not sleeping through the night at all. But most of the time it looked like going to bed at two or three in the morning, being um, at night being, I've heard this term uh, used to describe it and I think this is the best description I've heard ever. The term was feeling uh, wired but tired. And I would describe that anytime I am having a hard time going to sleep and I'm having that, that um, I don't know if I'd call it buzz in my brain, but like where your your thoughts are just moving quickly and you're just wanting to take in information and you just have all that energy, all that, um, I don't want to say, I don't want to say craziness, but you're just having, you're having thoughts a mile a minute or you're, um, for me, it's like obsessive compulsive thoughts. Um, oftentimes for me, it's worrying about family members on a loop, you know, just going on a loop. So being wired, but tired. So I would go to bed at two or three in the morning. Well, I'd go to bed at like nine, but I wouldn't go to sleep until about two or three in the morning. And then um, I would always have my alarm set for eight or nine o'clock in the morning. Um, it's like wishful thinking, like wishing that I'm going to get up that time. But so I would have it set for eight or nine. And then in the back of my mind, I knew I wasn't going to get up at that time. So I would have multiple alarms set, you know. And so my alarms would go off and I'd just turn them off because I was too tired to get up. Um, and so my, my pattern would be doing that. And then at noon, my husband would come and check on me. He'd bring me lunch. I'd eat my lunch and then slowly get out of bed and, and slowly start my day. There would be some days where I wouldn't get out of bed. And there would be some weeks where I would be in bed for two days, sometimes three days at a time. That was sort of my pattern. And on Seroquel, having a good day where I would wake up and get out of bed and get started with my day was really kind of non-existent. Um, and that went on for probably about five or six years, um, which is just really a horrible, horrible way to, you know, go about <laughs> doing things. 
so when I went off of that and I went on the Abilify, it was like a it was like a switch went off in my brain. About two days after being on Abilify, um, I went to bed at midnight, slept, woke up at eight, got up and got out of bed, being rested, feeling rested. Took a shower, got dressed, ate something, and started my day and it was like for me it was like a miracle it really was and it has changed our lives my husband and I has changed our lives it has enabled us to on the weekends when he's off work it has enabled us to go and do things together that we otherwise wouldn't have been able to do because I took it took me half the day to get up and get ready for the day and so now like for the first little bit, you know, when I was on, you know, when I started the Abilify, I didn't really know what to do because I had like all this time that was added to my day that I was not used to. So I didn't know what to do with myself. So it took actually, you know, some time to sort of get used to that. Um, so, you know, I like my current medication cocktail. Um, and so the way, the, the reason I'm telling you this is because uh, I wanted to talk about the way that bipolar can kind of trick our brains, can kind of trick us, is that when we are having a good day, a good few days, a good week, um, our brain, it, 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 it tricks us into thinking that we're cured. Maybe, maybe the medication has helped us so much that, that we don't need it anymore. And, you know, so, so for me, like, this is the way my brain is talking to me. It's saying, you're good, Angel. <laughs> you don't need this medication anymore. Um, maybe you don't have bipolar. Maybe you never had bipolar. What would you be like without this medication? What would your, would you still be the way you are? Would your personality be different? What were you like before the medication? Were you smarter? Were you like more of a fun person? Were you, because I was different before I was on the medication. I will tell you that. But I don't remember. <clears throat> but I will say that what I do remember, um, I'm not sure, I'm like we, I've talked about this in videos before about different instances that I do recall being um, hypomanic where I remember the instance and I was embarrassed by how I acted in that. So, so when I remember things like that, I, it does tell me, okay, don't go off your medication. <laughs> And this is not, I am not telling you to go off of your medication. So, um, but our mind kind of tricks us into thinking when we're having a good day, when we're having a good week, that we're good. We don't need the meds. We're, you know, like, and so, you know, that has sort of happened to me as of late. But then what also happened is um, I had a series of bad days. And then I got discouraged because I thought, oh man, things were going so well. <laughs> I was doing so good. Like I thought I had this thing like licked. I thought I was good. I thought I was in the clear. I thought I was golden. And then boom, you know, I couldn't get out of bed. And um, my body felt so heavy. And um, I was sad and I was angry because I felt that way and I was angry because this these thoughts that told me that everything was good and I didn't have to worry about this thing called bipolar um, all of that was dashed all those thoughts were gone you know it's like all of that hope was just like whoosh, crushed <laughs> you know but the truth is this, the truth is that I have bipolar. That's it. And I need medication. And
and that's okay. It's okay. And, um, and we can't be upset with ourselves because we need medication. And we cannot go off of our medication because we're having good days. And when we're having bad days where we can't get out of bed, we have to give ourselves a break. You have to give yourself a break because it's not in your control. When your body, when you, when you feel so heavy that it seems impossible to get out of bed just to go to the bathroom, it's okay. It's called an illness. You don't have control over that. And you just have to give yourself a break and let your body rest and recuperate. Because in another day, you're going to feel okay. That mood is going to lift and moods shift. Just the way you shifted into a bad mood, you're going to shift into a good mood. And it's going to happen. And I, I had a counselor tell me that one time when I was in a bad mood and I was like, that means nothing to me. Him saying that at that point meant nothing to me. But he was right. Moods shift. And we just have to be patient with ourselves. We have to be patient with the with what is happening. It's just the it's just the it's just the way the illness works. And um so uh I, I came across this this article by um, K. Redfield Jameson, and uh, it's it was one that she wrote for Bipolar Hope. And if you don't, if you're on Facebook and you don't um, subscribe or not subscribe, if you don't follow Bipolar Hope, you definitely should look look it up and um, follow that page. They put out some really great articles and have some great contributors. And I will put a link for this uh, particular article. Um, in the description box for this um, for this post that I'm making today, but um, so Kay uh, Redfield Jameson is uh, she's an expert on mood disorders, and why is she an expert? Because she suffers from bipolar herself, and she wrote a book about it. I think actually she's written a couple of books, but there's one in particular that I will um, show you that I that I own and that I've read. Um, she's a professor of psychiatry at Johns Hopkins uh, University of uh, the School of Medicine, and she has six. Ta uh, six. The article is called Six Must Do Things to Manage Bipolar." So I'm going to just go over briefly the six things. The number one thing is stay on your medication. This is paramount. Um, stay on your medication just because you're having a good day stay on your medication um, because I promise you if you go off your medication that good day is going to go away quickly. Um, number two is get regular sleep. If you're not getting regular sleep, if your sleep is being interrupted, if you're not able to go to sleep, you need to consult with your doctor. Um, my doctor talks about it as protecting my sleep. Um, which I think is a great way to look at it. Like our sleep is precious. It's very important for people with bipolar to make sure that we're getting at least eight, if not nine hours of sleep at night is what I have been um, told by my doctor. Um, you should consult with your doctor, but for me, my doctor has told me eight hours in the least. He'd like for me to get nine hours of sleep. Um, and he tells me that we have to protect my sleep. So the third thing is get involved with a support group. And I think this is this is really great advice. For me, it has worked in the past. I, I'm not currently in a support group. I would like to be, um, but COVID. <laughs> so um, in, the, in the past, um, I've been in a really great support group. I had a, the, the original support group I went to, I did not feel safe in. In fact, I left there in tears. So go to, you know, go seek out a support group. Make sure you feel safe in that group. If you do not, look for another group. I will add that to that little, um, to that little advice. 
Um, four is read and learn about your illness. And I think that this is really, really important as well. It's something that I try to do because um, I feel like knowledge is power. We've all heard that before. But the more that we know about our illness, the better we are able to help ourselves. And also um, for our caregivers, I think it's really important for them to read about our illness or to learn as much as they can about our illness because, again, they're better able to help us and um, to be there for us uh, if they know as much as they can. Um, five, it says go in with a list of questions when seeing your doctor. This, I think, is really important because brain fog. Um, a lot of our medications cause this, this fog, and so when something comes up and I'm thinking of it, and I want to talk to my doctor about it, I just jot it down really quickly because if I don't, I'm not going to remember it even 20 minutes later. Um, I have to write it down right then. And if I don't have a pen and paper, I always have my phone on me. Generally, it's like in my back pocket. I can pull it out and I have a memos um, app and so I can go in and just type it in my memos and I love that. Um, and the sixth thing is, and this one is something that I agree with because it's something I did and that is get psychotherapy if you can afford it and um, she says this about psychotherapy it's she says research reveals that regular psychotherapy including talk therapy they go together can achieve long-lasting results for those struggling with depression and bipolar disorder when there's no universal formula when it it says while there's no universal formula when it comes to therapy Remember that there are different types of psychotherapy beyond the widely used practice of cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, for improving mental health. Research your choices. And I would just add to that my experience with psychotherapy, which was really, or not psycho, yes, psychotherapy, sorry, which was really, really beneficial. And I did it along with, at the time, I was doing DBT. Right now, my current counselor and I have talked about switching to CBT. But um, I found psychotherapy very, very helpful. I didn't know initially when I got there. I was a little skeptical because I was like, oh, this is, seems really different. And because it is different than counseling. It's different than CBT and DBT. So I was thrown off a little. And you'll know what I'm talking about if you go. It's just different. But it was great. It was very, very helpful. And um, we did some... Uh, some sessions where we did some hypnosis, which I found helpful, and um, I did it for about a year and found that after a year I felt like I had gotten everything out of it that I really needed, and um, if I feel like at any time I should go back, I would definitely go back and do it again. So if you have the, um, the means to do it, I would definitely encourage you to check it out. So. Um, so with that, um, the book that I would also encourage you to read, it is a national bestseller. It's called An Unquiet Mind, <clears throat> and it's a memoir of moods and madness, it says, by Kay Redfield Jameson. And it looks like this. You probably have seen this book before. It has been around for quite a while. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I, I bought this book back in 2013, and it it's been out beyond that so it's a it's a great book it talks about um, her and her memoir of you know being back in medical school and her um, <clears throat> before it's her pre-diagnosis and then also post diagnosis and just some of the things that she went through during school and even before school so um, anyway it's a great book you should check it out um, with that uh, that's all I have for you today. I hope you guys are staying healthy and well. Um, I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you're having a great week. And until we talk again, bye.